Invasion of the Undead, written by Nicole Baker. In the midst of a zombie apocalypse, Nicole and her friends have to defend their home from Brandon, a sadistic vampire with an army of zombies. Will they succeed, or will Brandon take their city and their lives? Hello, and welcome back to an audiobook review. Um, I know it's been some time since I've done one of these, but I kind of took 2023 off from book reviews, mainly because I wanted to focus more on reviewing movies with my daughter, spending time with her, working on my next book, um... And I started at the beginning of the year reaching out to authors, and I did a little bit for a while, but nobody wanted to get an audiobook review. So I didn't push it because I had all my own projects going on. I had all my own stuff I was into. I had some life stuff going on, and I decided halfway through the year, I was like, you know what? Okay, it's already been half a year. I think I'm going to take the rest of this year off. So I didn't do that. Um, I also did not do the awards for 2022. So I might do that if any of the past authors I've reviewed books for. If you really want me to do a award show, if you want me to keep that going, let me know down in the comments below. And I will try to make it a yearly thing if enough people want it. But with that said, the book I am reviewing today, coming back in, um, this is a novella. And this one... I actually did not speak to the author at all. Um, I actually got this... I asked their narrator, because their narrator for their book was the same narrator I use on my recent books from The Guardian of Light, book three, up to what will be book six. Um, so I'm not keeping that in mind, you know, when I'm doing my score, by the way, in case anybody's wondering. But yeah, I saw that they had just finished a project and I said, hey, reach out to the author, ask the author if they want me to review their book and I'll, I'll do it, you know. I, I've got nothing going on. 
you know, no audiobook reviews coming in, no request. So, if you are an author and you want me to check out your books and you want an honest review and you want it on YouTube, I also, these reviews, they'll probably end up on Rumble. And, well, they might end up on Rumble. It's iffy sometimes. And it might end up on BitChute as well. I have some... Audiobook reviews, I believe, on my bit shoot channel. And I'm waiting forever and a day for Rumble to catch up. Um, it might take years <laughs> for Rumble to catch up. It's because I do constantly upload so much, it has trouble keeping up with my YouTube channel. So I might have to turn the auto sync off on Rumble and actually upload them all manually. But, alas, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, so, yes, if you have not, and <coughs> audiobooks, or books in general, if you like getting reviews, then definitely consider subscribing today. And with that, let's go ahead and jump in to this review for Invasion of the Undead by Nicole Baker. Okay, so starting with the cover and title, Invasion of the Undead, I want to start by saying the title does fit the story pretty accurately. I mean, the cover... I mean, it does kind of fit, but at the same time, it looks a little on the generic side. Like, this is something... Very easy to find. Uh, it's, I mean, people are gonna see it and it's gonna look like a million other covers because it's got an attractive woman. Um, me personally, I, I think there's something off with the aspect ratio of the woman. I think she, she needs to be like, maybe the guy and the girl need to be smaller on the cover. But, I mean, it's fine for what it is. It's a short little story, so it's not like it's horrible. Um, it's going to draw people in, I believe. So, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10, 5. I'm going to give this 4 stars. Sorry. 4 stars for the t cover and title. Now, moving on to the narration. As for the narration, I am going to have to give the narration five stars. It's very good. Um, it does have a male and female narrator, which I'll probably bring up again later, but um, they work well off each other. And they read the story very clearly and can do several different voices. So it does translate very well with the narration. Now, I don't know on the actual writing, like reading it, how easy or bad it read. Um, if they had to make any changes when they recorded it. So I don't know any of that. So if you've picked up the paperback and there's something different... And you had trouble? I don't know. But moving on to the writing. Now, when I look at the writing, as I said back during the score, um, this is where I look at a lot of different factors. And for the writing, I have to give this book a three stars score. 
Uh, the reason why is because it was a little bit all over the place from time to time. Um, it had, it does have, don't get me wrong, this story has some really good potential. Um, I think it, the biggest drawback is that the writer went for a more novella style rather than a novel style. And what I mean by this is, I think the book is only like six chapters long. It took me an hour to listen to this on Audible. Um, and there was this inconsistencies. Like, the book starts off with a prologue, which you really didn't need a prologue. I mean, you could have just had that as part of the first chapter. Um, but it does start off with a prologue. And then it goes to six months later. But then later on, the main protagonist loses somebody and they say that they've been with that person for two years. But they didn't know that, but they also say that they didn't know that person before the apocalypse. So it's like, but the prologue kind of sets up the apocalypse and when it happens. So the apocalypse has only been going on for six months. How have they been dating for two years? Little things like that that I noticed. Um, now, like I said, that could maybe be fixed. Maybe it was an understanding thing. I'm not sure. But I do feel like it should have been better. It could have been better. Um, and there's a lot of this that kind of goes with that. But it, some of this I'm saving for other sections. So, moving on to the story. Now, when I look at the story, I believe I said this in the scoring, um, I also look at not just the story itself, but also the world building. This world you put me into. And I felt like the biggest downfall of the story. By the way, I'm giving this story three stars. But the biggest downfall for this story is things moving way too fast. Again, this is something where if the author took their time and wrote a longer story, you would have had more time for the setup. There would have been more time to set up this typical average girl who was living just a normal life and didn't think of a care in the world about never thought zombies were possible, which is, you know, basically how they begin by the book is by saying all that to, you know, what happened to the whole zombie apocalypse starting to her actually having to deal with changing her lifestyle. Like, we should have, like, sh just in that prologue alone, she skipped over probably a hundred to two hundred possible pages of story and just jumped us forward. And I feel like that was the biggest downfall. We needed to see this character lose everyone she loved. We needed to see her struggle, her learning to fight zombies. Because this is something I'm going to bring up with characters, but things happen too easily. And she's just suddenly like a deadly assassin. And just... And that's, you know, again, we're going to get into characters soon. 
But, you know, and I feel like we needed to see this. We needed to see her lose everyone, find new people, train with maybe ex-military that fell to the zombies. You know, we needed to establish the zombie threat and have just the whiff of the vampires. Not a full-out vampire until towards the middle or end of the book. We needed just a hint of the vampire thing. Um, and like I said, there's just a lot of inconsistencies with the story. So, that's why it gets a three. Moving on to the characters now. And as I was kind of trying to say with the story and the inconsistencies, this too is also going to get a three from me. Um, mostly because of the fact that because she speed runs you through the story, a lot of this just does not come off as believable. We don't get enough time to really bond with the main character to know who the main character really is. It's like... Watching a movie, but you're only getting the last 30 minutes of the movie. Without that first hour and a half... You don't really have time to understand the struggle that the bad guy, that the good guy is going through. Why they, sh why you should care about what they're caring about. Um, I had a conversation with a friend of mine once, and we were watching that Demon Slayer anime movie. And I said, I don't get why Tanjiro is so upset about this dude dying. He's known him for like two hours. They haven't had that long to bond. And that's what a lot of this book lacks, is the bonding of the character. That's why books are supposed to take so long, because they really get you to bond with the character. Now, she is really great at describing the characters and going back to story just for a smidge, setting the scene. She's really good at that. It's just spending enough time slowing down the story, going through the really tough parts. Now, I'm not saying the writer should rewrite this book. This book's done. It's out there. I mean, it's up to them if they want to. But if she does a sequel, if she wants to do any more in this world, maybe go at it from a prequel perspective or, you know, something where this, if you come into this book later in the series, it's like, oh, okay. I already know the rules of this world. I understand how this world works. So this is just another little story. And I can maybe give the author a piece of advice on how to do that. But, um, yeah, that's the biggest drawback with the characters, though. It just happens way too fast. Um, like I said, she goes from being a regular average girl to suddenly a badass. And everyone she comes across is like a badass. And yeah, there are people who clearly get killed off. Like one or two. <laughs> I think it was. Um, and that just, it didn't have any weight for me. Because it's like, you know. Why should I care? And it clearly didn't have enough weight for the protagonist either because she loses her boyfriend and has to kill him. And by the next chapter, she's with someone else. So, I mean, I get that this is an apocalyptic world with zombies and vampires 
and you're living from day to day, and she took like a week to mourn, or maybe two weeks, I think it was. But then she's over it, and she's moving on to the next guy. I don't think, you know, realistically that that would happen. Maybe it would. I don't know. I'm not living in an Islamic apocalypse. <coughs> but if I were writing it, I don't feel that this story merited a novella. Unless it was meant to be a tragedy, in which case they all would have died. And then I could say, okay, well, it didn't really matter about the characters because we're going to lose them all anyway. But that's not what happened. So let's go ahead and move on to extras. Uh, there is a pr epilogue. Uh, the epilogue was kind of a wrap-up. It really wasn't needed to be an epilogue. Um, and it kind of ends the it ends it like it's ending the series for good. Like it's saying, okay, I'm done with this. I'm moving on. I'm not sure how this author... I, I would love a chance to talk with this author. Maybe this is not exactly her forte of where her writing talents would be. Maybe it would be in something else. Like... A, co um, a comedy or just a straight up drama. Like I said, she sets the scene really well. The only big problem is that she speed runs through the story she's telling. And this, a fantasy world, is a world where you need to develop. You need to really dive into what's going on. You know, I do that with my own book series, The Guardian of Light. Um, I've actually had people say, well, why didn't you just write one and see how it did? So, like, because I already knew I wanted to write a lot. I had an entire world of stuff I was building up to. And I wasn't going to be able to fit it all into the first book. So I wanted to just keep writing. If people don't read my books, whatever. But at least I got it out of my head. It's on the page. It's formatted out. The world is built. And I'm expanding that world more and more and more. Like, okay, so originally my books were going to be like seven books. And then I dropped it down to six. And now it's going to be 12. Not all probably the same. Like, it's going to have arcs. Like an anime or a manga. Um, but yeah, I mean, the main the main story is going to end with book six. And then a new story with the same characters will begin. And they'll be going on a new adventure. They'll be doing a new thing. Um, but we're talking about extra time about my books. Sorry. <laughs> Got a plug. Um... The author does use two narrators, which is something I really enjoy. Um, and that's it, pretty much it for extras. So I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'll reveal the final score and give my final thoughts. See you all in a minute. Bye. For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of Guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness, an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new Guardian. 
As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware, will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right, so after calculating the numbers up and running everything, I am going to have to give Invasion of the Undead. Written by Nicole Baker. A 5 out of 10. Like I said. It's a good story. It has a lot of good setup. But. The author just rushed through it. Way too fast. Uh, Jim Lauder and. EJ Holmes. They did a really good job at narrating. If the author had just taken more time slowed down to tell a more cohesive story and let us go on this journey with this character and experience life. This could have been a cross between like the walking dead and Buffy, the vampire slayer. And honestly, it still could be, um, basically the way I see the author can fix this where, a lot of that information isn't needed is to do a prequel that is like an entire novel and sets up this book as kind of the end or has us following an entirely new character who's setting up the world and that book could introduce us to the idea that there's actually like a vampire council that started this whole thing. And it could actually reference the events from this book. Like the zombie council is getting together halfway through the book. And they are saying, you know, oh, well, we've taken all of the U.S. And we've taken Mexico. And we've taken Canada. We're moving our forces over to Europe. And we're going to start conquering over there. And unleash our zombie armies across Europe. And then uh, we can have one come in and say, well, we lost a small city. And they say, oh, who was in, in charge of that? Or whose domain was that? And they were like, oh, we put this new vampire, Brandon, in charge of it. And he failed and he was killed. That was could reference this book just that alone and then the author could do so much more with this world she could take time to explore a whole new character to do a whole new type of story with this that is my personal thoughts on how she can fix so that this really won't matter to her where but it's not my story this is her story I'm just saying what I think. But that's all. And with that said, I did enjoy this. I wish I could have enjoyed it more. It, that's why it got a 5 out of 10 for me, though. Um, 
I hope this doesn't discourage anyone from possibly thinking of letting me review more books in the future. If she uh, reaches out to me herself and wants to talk, hey, I'd love to talk with her. If uh, she wants me to do future books reviews for her, I'd love to do that too. And if any other authors are listening to this or watching, um, message me. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'll put my Facebook account down in the description below so if you are an author and you want your audiobook reviewed you can do that if you're a reader and you want to read a really good book um you can check out my books the guardian of light books one through five are available right now it really would help out me uh and the channel a lot and if you want to check out this book that'd be great too I'm sure the author would love all the feedback they can get. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And I will see you all next time I do a review for an audiobook, which I don't know when that's going to be. But you can always also catch me and my daughter on our D&D Movie Time episodes. We should have one coming out this Friday. Took a little bit of time off for editing, but we should have... Getting, getting back to the Lord of the Rings reviews coming next Friday. So, all right. See you all then. Bye.